WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. The search continues for a missing Starkville man. 31-year-old Corey Bond was last seen leaving his apartment on Stark Road on November 12th. It's believed he was last traveling on Highway 82. Starkville police and Bond's friends and family say they're concerned. Our Cash Matlock joins us in the studio with the latest on this case. Cash. Guys, earlier today I spoke with Corey's sister, Katie. She says they think Corey was headed home to see his father in Alabama when he disappeared. She says the last time she spoke to her brother was that Tuesday before lunch. Katie Hearn is Corey Vaughn's younger sister. She says she has a close relationship with her brother, so when she didn't hear from him for a few days, she began to worry. Like, he, he never broke contact, even if we were arguing or something. That just wasn't in his character at all. The Bond family is originally from Lynn, Alabama, but Corey had just recently moved to Starkville for a job at Express Oil Change. Hearn says her father was not expecting a visit from Corey on the 12th since it was in the middle of the week. But Dad had understood on that Sunday conversation that Corey was just having like a normal work week. He didn't mention anything about coming home to Dad. Corey's white Nissan 350Z is also missing. Hearn, her father, and 85 volunteers scoured the area searching for any traces of the vehicle. If he ran off of a roadway, we'd have seen him for sure that day. In previous days to Saturday, me and my dad had just independently went there and drove from daylight till dark just looking for him. We've been uh, getting assistance from a lot of um, agencies, whether they be you know, both public and private. We've also had you know, some state organizations doing some uh, drone work and things like that. Hearn says the past few days have been painful, especially after unexpectedly losing her mother this past March. I just try not to think about the thought of losing my mom and my brother <laughs> in the same year. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm not, I've had trouble sleeping and eating and all the things you'd expect, but I'm just not allowing myself to grieve yet because, you know, we, we don't know what's happened to Corey, so. If anyone has any information, they are asked to contact the Starkville Police Department. We need to work together as a community to uh, find Mr. Baum out and uh, hopefully this individual is safe. If they've got anything they even remotely think was concerning that Corey may have verbally said, call the Starkville Police Department, please, because um, like even something small may be a big lead and we just don't realize it at this point. Corey Bond is 5'10 and weighs 165 pounds. He has brown hair and brown eyes. If you have any information, again, please contact the Starkville Police Department. That number is 662-323-4134. An argument leads to an aggravated assault charge. 63-year-old Jerome Cooper was arrested this past Saturday. Sheriff Eddie Scott says Clay, uh, excuse me, says his deputies and West Point police went to a home on Section Road to investigate. There was an argument, and then there was a gunshot. No one was injured. Scott says West Point PD has taken over the investigation. The police department has not released any information about the incident. Choctaw County deputies continue to investigate a deadly weekend shooting as the victim's name is released. Investigators say Kenneth Pratt was shot multiple times at his Seward Road home. Deputies were first called about a missing person. This was about 9 o'clock Friday night. After deputies searched the property, Pratt's body was found. Information about what may have led to the shooting has not been released. No arrests have been made in the case. The Mississippi Bureau of Investigation, along with the Choctaw County Sheriff's Department and the coroner's office, are investigating. A former police. Pickens County Sheriff is ordered to serve 18 months in prison. David Abston was sentenced this morning in a Birmingham federal courtroom. He pleaded guilty back in June to one count of wire fraud and filing false tax returns. Prosecutors say Abston scammed a food Ooh, bank boy. and his church to get jail food at a low cost and boost his own income. A state law at the time allowed sheriffs to pocket excess jail food funds. Abston must pay $51,000 in restitution. He was sheriff for over 30 years. A GUNTOWN WOMAN FIRED FOR BEING A WHISTLEBLOWER WILL BE GETTING DAMAGES FOR LOST INCOME. A LEE COUNTY JURY SIDED WITH HEATHER WALTERS WHO FILED SUIT AFTER SHE WAS FIRED FROM THE CAREGIVER FIRM BRANDY'S HOPE. 
Walters argues she was let go after reporting suspected abuse of a patient. The attorney general's office did make an arrest of a worker based in part on her information. Brandy's Hope claims Walters violated company policy by using her personal phone to take pictures of the alleged abuse. Walters attorney says her client was awarded $100,000. Another longtime Columbus police officer is resigning. Rhonda Sanders confirms to WCBI that she submitted her resignation this morning. She will take some time during the month of December to care for her father. Her last official day will be December 15th. Sanders, who has been with CPD for 23 years, says she has accepted a new opportunity starting in January. Her resignation comes on the heels of Captain Rick Higgins, who turned in his notice last Tuesday. Higgins was the commander of the patrol division at CPD. Really nice day today. Temperatures now cooling down into the 50s, already down to 50 at the Air Force Base in Columbus. Other spots into the mid to upper 50s still at this hour. But the sky basically clear at this point and will eventually cool down into the 40s as we go throughout the evening hours in many spots here. But the clouds will fill back in late tonight. And it should be a mostly cloudy day Tuesday. There could be a few showers around during the day. I think those storms. We'll tend to wait until the evening and early tomorrow, late, uh, early uh, tomorrow evening through tomorrow night. Uh, that's when those storms are most likely. So let me just show you a quick forecast map for tomorrow. Some showers possible during the day, but as we get into tomorrow night, a better chance for some storms. You can see it right there. I'm back with your full forecast in just a few minutes. Well, a lot of excitement across the state yes. today at 5 o'clock this morning. Mississippi became the 45th state to have a lottery. You can now test your luck at local stores uh, playing uh, to take a chance. It should be really a win for the state. Yeah, that's what a lot of people are thinking. Up to $80 million in lottery proceeds will go to roads and bridges in the state. Our Stephanie Bull joins us live with more on how lottery ticket sales are going off for the first day. Stephanie. Yes, there are thousands of people that have came through certain convenience stores testing their luck for the lottery. There are four different scratch-off tickets that are available that can cost you anywhere from one dollar to five bucks. Now there are over 1,000 retail stores throughout the Magnolia State, and they are hoping that this business will pay off with more people coming through their stores. Thousands of Mississippians are crossing their fingers, taking a chance on winning a prize in the Mississippi Lottery. Manager of West Point Sprint Mart Tammy Rude says by lunchtime, over 150 people have been in to buy tickets. I think it's going to get a lot of people's attention, and I think that it, the more winners you go have and stuff, it's going to even make people more hungry for the tickets. Root says the lottery will hopefully attract more customers to her store. It's going to really up our sales or everything, the gas, anywhere from the gas to the cigarettes to the beer, everything. Retailers who are in small towns like Vardaman are noticing the difference. Manager of Mount Supermarket Josh James says around 75 customers have purchased scratch-off tickets since they opened this morning. I know a lot of people probably still at work right now and had a real chance to come get it. Uh, I look probably toward the end of the week when holidays start, everybody's getting off work, uh, payday hits, they'll probably buy a few more tickets at that time. James is hopeful the large crowd of lottery players will soon turn into permanent shoppers. A few I've never really seen before and then we've had a lot of our regulars come in as well with it and buying tickets. Most of the ones have come in just for the lottery but I have had a few come in today and buy groceries and then pick up a few tickets on their way out and that's really what we're hoping for stuff like that. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind before playing. You must be 21, and you have 90 days to claim your winnings with a photo ID. But for now, reporting live in Columbus, Stephanie Poole, WCBI News. The first ticket went to the woman who fought for years to bring the lottery to Mississippi. There was a lot of fanfare this morning as District 69 State Representative Alice Clark and, yeah, even an Elvis impersonator was there. I, I think there was a band, too, arrived for the purchase. Clark has been pushing the idea of a lottery for about 20 years. Initially, she wanted it to go to education, the proceeds, that is. However, Clark says she's excited Mississippi is moving forward with a good idea to fix the state's highways. We had done something about it when we first started working on it. Our roads and bridges would not have been in the condition that they're in. But it's better late than never. So it appears that we're here doing something and it's going to be good. 
Clark also reminded lottery customers not to buy every ticket in the store because you only need one ticket to win. Right, Andrea? That's right. Did you buy your ticket today, by the way? I did not. I'm Still going waiting. after work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, talk about your golden years. A couple of ladies in Columbus are marking a milestone. We take a look at a special anniversary when we come back. Welcome back. Baptist Golden Triangle is celebrating a combined 100 years of service. Today, hospital employees recognize Ms. Addie Clay and Ms. Betty Brackett for their careers. Both of these women have been working at the hospital for 50 years. As a matter of fact, they were working there before it was Baptist. Dozens of doctors, nurses, and other personnel shared some stories, hugs, and a lot of laughs as they celebrated this milestone. Both women say they have no plans of stopping anytime soon. Years will go by fast if you don't count them each year. If you just do it routinely and you don't have to worry about it, it will pass by fast. If you're working, keep on working. If you're able, work be on time. On time, do your job, and do your best. Be on time and do your best. That's good advice. Ms. Clay's family says they've tried to plan four retirement parties, but every <laughs> time, Ms. Clay says she just can't retire and keeps on working. There you go. The staff council at Mississippi University for Women is making sure families in Columbus have a happy Thanksgiving. The group delivered van loads of Thanksgiving baskets this morning to the Columbus Housing Authority to be distributed. The baskets were packed with food and household items. W staff members say this is just one way to support the community that supports them. The W is a community um, first college and uh, university. So uh, being able to help the needy um, and elderly this um, holiday season is, one, is of the utmost importance to us. It's something that we do every year. Um, so we definitely try to make sure that this is uh, carried on through our traditions. All of the items were donated by students, faculty, and staff at MUW. All right. Keith, I'm betting if there were a torrential downpour, it would not have stopped people from getting those lottery tickets no, today. Man, no, and you know, I, I was at the gas station yesterday morning, saw them waiting, uh -huh. could not buy one. <laughs> wow. Haven't got mine yet. Go after the show. There you go. Well, like you said, <laughs> it only takes one to win, but most likely we won't be winning here. Uh, Weather-wise this week, uh, we may be losing later on. We have a couple of storm systems coming our way, currently in the 50s in many spots here. Clouds will fill back in as we go throughout the course of the night, and we do have some rain potential tomorrow and beyond. Your full forecast is next. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Two systems coming our way this week. It's Thanksgiving week, and as is typical, we are watching a couple of things come our way. The first one will be late tomorrow into tomorrow night. Another system as we get into Saturday, maybe Saturday night or early Sunday. So this is the pressure trend. One big area of low pressure will move on through, and then another one will get organized later this week. That could be even bigger, system number two, for the weekend. So something to watch out for. Those uh, storms will actually be providing snow across the northern plains. For us, we have some severe weather potential. Overall, the threat is low here for tomorrow evening and tomorrow night from about 6 p.m. through about 3 or 4 a.m. early Wednesday. Uh, isolated damaging, damaging wind potential would be the primary threat here. Uh, we'll watch it as we go through time. The level two threat back in the Delta and Arkansas, that's the yellow. We have this level one threat in the green, the western part of our area. These will be adjusted. These colors will be adjusted tomorrow as new data come on in. But that's what we're watching out for right now. The primary threat, wind, and the greater threat overall could be just off to our west. But future cast shows the clouds coming back in this evening, and it looks like we will be overcast tomorrow. We enjoyed our Monday, right? Lots of sunshine, but tomorrow more clouds and maybe a few spotty showers during the day. Now, as we get into the late afternoon and early evening, shower potential and thunderstorm uh, chances start to go on up. And we may see a line of gusty storms move across our region tomorrow evening. A lot of this looks like it will be done by 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, and then we'll just go with variably cloudy conditions during the day Wednesday. That's the way it's looking here in the near term. Now, anywhere from a half inch to maybe one to one and a half inches of moisture here with this first system, that is our rain potential. Our Alpha Insurance Camera Network in Columbus, Tupelo, Louisville, and Vernon shows a quiet evening temperatures now in the 50s and just some of those wispy clouds drifting across our region right now. Temperatures should be in the 60s tomorrow. Winds from the southeast increasing about 10 to 20. So 
Uh, that is a near-term situation. We got on the backside of system number one for Wednesday, variably cloudy. Thursday, your Thanksgiving, better rain chances just to our northwest. I don't think we'll see a lot of rain here for Thanksgiving or for Friday for all the shoppers out there. But that next one, the next storm system is waiting in the wings as we get into Saturday. And that could be the next big whopper of a system down here. We've been avoiding a lot of these big systems this season so far. Now we are getting into that time of year where we could get some of these storms to roll on through here. And you saw the 70 forecast there. We'll have another look at the end of the show. All right. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, we always have two severe weather seasons in the south. Uh, November can be active. This is true. All right. Well, Egg Bowl Week is officially here. Two of the state's brightest stars uh, could run wild on Thursday. More on the rivalry next in sports. WCDI Sports with Tom Ebel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. Well, most of us won't be running on Thanksgiving Day very much, thanks to all the turkey, dressing, and potatoes that'll be eaten. It may be the only thing happening during the 2019 Egg Bowl. Two of the SEC's most efficient running games will meet in Starkville. With two dynamic centerpieces in each offense, the challenge will be stopping them, starting with Mississippi State. Joe Moorhead and Bob Shoup will be tasked with slowing down John Rice Plumley, the SEC's leading rushing quarterback, Back-to-back -back games more than 170 yards plus on the ground for Plumlee. Moorhead says all Ole Miss offensive coordinator Rich Rodriguez is using Plumlee exactly as he has with speedster quarterbacks of the past. Coach Rodriguez does a great job, you know, going back to his time at, at Michigan with Shulate, Denard Robinson, and then, uh, you know, even going back to Pat White, who's now coaching at, at Alcorn, of... Uh, Creating great design quarterback runs and putting people in conflict, and I think that's the thing that you see with, with, um, with John Rice, with with Ely, with Phillips, and then the, the Connor kid. That they do a great job, kind of uh, making sure both of those guys are threats and having to defend the, the quarterback and the run back. In kind of similar to some of the stuff we do. So um, you know, he's a guy that's got tremendous speed, great escapability, and, and for a smaller guy, he runs with pretty good physicality too. So you just got to make sure you. You swarm and get him down to get him down on the ground because he's he's made a lot of explosive plays. For Ole Miss, it'll be all about containing the SEC's leading rusher, Kylan Hill. Hill and the Bulldogs gashed Ole Miss in 2019 on the ground. The Columbus native adding 108 yards to that 300-yard rushing day last season. It's been the theme all year. The Bulldogs go as Kylan goes, and Matt Luke is very much aware of number eight. Is Kylan Hill. He's you know he's the leading rusher in the Southeastern Conference. He's a very very good player and he do, does a great job. You know making people miss, breaking tackles, uh, yards after contact. I mean all those things he's very very good at. And so uh, but you know both quarterbacks can run the football. You know that you add that dimension. Uh, you got to you know you got to account for all 11 guys all the time and then the play actions off of it. The biggest week of football of the year for us here at WCBI, Ole Miss at Mississippi State, the 2019 Egg Bowl in Starkville, kicking off at 6.30. The game will be on national TV on ESPN. Here's a little nugget for you. The road team has won four straight in the battle for the Golden Egg. That's the longest win streak by the road team since it won five straight from 1994 to 1998. So the Bulldogs will try and buck that trend. Ole Miss will try and keep the home crowd a little bit sad. Mississippi State, you know the story. Five and six, a win, they clinch bull eligibility. If the Rebels win, they get to five and seven. They could get in at five and seven, but they would need a lot of help from around college football nationally. Take a look at the Connerly Trophy. We just talked about them. Mississippi State's Kylan Hill and Ole Miss's John Rice Plumley headlining the Connerly Trophy finalists for this upcoming year. But take a look at some of the other names. Some guys we used to see on end zone. Southern Miss's Jack Abraham from Oxford. West Point native Keontae Hampton of Jackson State. And some other notables, Tracy Tompkins from Mississippi Valley. Liam Vincifora from Millsaps. Hunter McEachern from Bellhaven. Alcorn State's Felix Harper. And then Junior Falk, Dietrich Hawthorne, just some guys from around the state of Mississippi that have been fantastic all year. That's a vote. It'll, uh, the winner will be decided next week. Yeah. Cool. Oh, a lot more than pride on the line in this year's uh, Egg Bowl. A little oh, bit. Yeah. Egg Bowl eligibility. You get one more game if you get a dub. That's right. All right. We'll see. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.
All right, the state fire marshal's office wants to make sure your Thanksgiving does not go up in flames. With a little help, the fire marshal's office demonstrating the dangers of overfilling a turkey fryer with grease. Uh, that could nah, be dangerous. That's it. Officials <laughs> also are showed how not fully thawing your turkey can have deadly consequences. Oil and water from a partially thawed turkey have a violent reaction, then grease overflows and hits the flames of the fryer. It just all gets bad. Fire experts say there are many things that could go wrong. You can get a list of safety recommendations on our website. And of this all, of course, if you plan to fry your turkey or even have turkey, I, I just share with the guys, I'm Team Ham on Thanksgiving. Oh, I love it. Myself a good turkey. Really? Mm -hmm. This oh, is more contentious than egg bowl. No. <laughs> team ham or team turkey? <laughs> I, Tom, you're the only one that has a. I'm team turkey. Turkey. Go team hey. Turkey. Wow. All right. Half and half up here. Like, what do you think? Team mm. ham or team turkey? We need to know. Go. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Yeah, let us know. We, we need answers. <laughs> <laughs> have a good night.